tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Alright, so for this week's episode, if you've noticed, I've been interviewing mostly students. Even if they're very involved in their youth organizations. Uh, just like last week. Those uh, officers of streets to, streets to schools are still students. And we would sometimes hear about what um, they would go through uh, with school, especially now, given we're going through this pandemic. So for this episode, I actually decided to invite the teachers this time so that we could hear also their side of the story on what's it like being a teacher, especially now that we're all going through this pandemic. So I would yeah. like to introduce to you, I have Patricia Torres. So she teaches in ISM. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Okay, do I call you Patricia or Pat? <laughs> okay, so there's Pat. And then we also have Nick Lianes. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, you Nick. did. All right, so there's Nick. He teaches naman in Christ's Gospel. Yeah, both of you took up secondary education in college. So, all right. Now, um, both of you now teach in different schools. Um, Pat in ISM and si Nick naman in Christ's Gospel Academy. So, uh, I'll ask... Um, each one of you know maybe we could start with Pat. So Pat, you teach what grade now in ISM? Uh, I teach grade ten. So okay. the second one is uh, grade second year. Second year, because okay. we're not following uh, the ed curriculum, so we have IB because since it's an international school. So grade ten is ISM is equivalent to second year, so local schools. Okay, and how long have you been with ISM? It's my second year this second. year. Okay, and then um, have you been with other schools before or just ISM? Yeah, uh, actually, after I graduated from college, I have been with CSA Mahati. So I thought, or I became an English and a research teacher as well. So sa CSA naman, I was a teacher of grade nine and grade ten. Kids. So that's third year and fourth year. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay. How about C Nick naman? Uh, what grade do you teach in Christ? Uh, nowadays I teach um, grade seven to ten. Um, I teach English and computer, but I also they they also uh, ask me to speak every chapel time. It's it's a Christian school bus, so we have that yeah, even nowadays. Okay, so um, what do you talk about when they ask you to speak? Um. Our, our topic is uh, just Jesus, um, you know, what he's done um, for us, okay. how he's done, stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, and um, is Christ Gospel Academy the first school you thought that, or you mm, Yes, it's it's actually my first uh, teaching job, and it's, um, it's very fun, best uh, choice for me. Um, yeah. What made you decide to go into teaching? I believe that teaching would have given me a lot more, a lot more um, opportunities to exercise all of my abilities. So I, I love speaking. I love uh, sharing ideas, and I love you know thinking up of stuff, being in a room, um, controlling the controlling the ideas in the room. You know, just it's it's that back and forth. I love the idea of communicating and. Um, Doing a back and forth between my students and I, so so it, it it's very exciting to be a teacher because I can do that every day. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually, same question with Pat. Uh, what made you decide to be a teacher? In my case, the moment, uh, at first, I think I was one of those kids that I didn't know what to do in life. So I was kind of lost, like there was nothing specific that I wanted to do. And at that time, all I was sure of was, I open up my math, I open up my science. So yun lang yung non And I was, I know sa sarili ko na I was very strong in English, but at that time, I didn't know what English course I wanted to take. But when I entered uh, third year high school, I had this English teacher who was also very young. So she was like three years uh, older than us. And then she made me love the subject even more. 
Tapos, at the same time, yung mga classmates ko who didn't like English, they were excited for English. So, parang dun ko naisip na, it's actually very rewarding when you come to think of it, na parang nakaka-inspire ka ng mga bata. You know, you have these kids who are excited to go to class because of Like, even if they don't like the subject because they like the teacher, parang they want to go to class. So, that's when I thought to myself na I want to be like that also. Like, I want to be the reason why these kids want to go to school or want to go to class or why they love English. So, dun ko, talaga, like, since third year high school onwards, I was so sure na I wanted to be a high school English teacher, to be exact. Okay. High school English teacher. Okay. All right. You actually, you know, that that's very nice to hear. And speaking of, memang, I think some of your students are watching you na now. I see in the comment section, may mga pag go teacher now. Yeah. Times are different. We're all going through this pandemic together. And I've been, um, well, ako, my old college professors, I would see them. Posting is very cute. You know how mental of age na sila, they don't know how to work the <laughs> Google classes and all. But I just want to know, what's it like being a teacher now? Uh, maybe you could compare uh, your teaching life pre-COVID and now. So maybe Nick, if you would want to start. Um. It's it's a different challenge. Uh, it's it's definitely a different challenge, but the same thrill of you know being a teacher, trading ideas with your students, um, you know, you know, interacting with them. It's still there. It's it's still there, but it's behind the screen. So there there's a lot of limitations. Like um, like for example, you you're not sure if everyone is listening to you at the same time. Um, you're not you're not really sure, right? They could be doing something because. Uh, let's face it. We have all gone through meetings where we we're not we're not doing anything uh, behind the screen. We're just lying down or doing something else. So it's it's the same for my students. So it it faces a challenge. It's it's a challenge that we we have to face. But it's it's still super fun because uh, I know fundamentally you're still talking to your students. You're still um, you're still sharing ideas. You're still learning about English. So it's still fun, uh, and I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't fun. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I want to ask you, lang Nick. Um, mm-hmm. super agree with those um, online meetings. Sometimes you tend to, especially if it's off camera. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, ikaw, Nick, as a teacher, how would you capture their attention, or how would you make them, you know, listen for it and make class fun? online um so normally uh nowadays i present them with something uh, interesting um or something provoking and i also when when i'm when i'm checking for comprehension what i do is i roll a dice uh and then um depending on what um turns up on the head um that person will have to you know do something do something that Uh, I required them, so so that's how I would keep the class uh, thrilled and um, interested in in uh, comprehending our subject matter. Yeah. But in so, in general, um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh in God. in general, I, I I make my class a bit uh, gamified. So um, if if I can, I don't wanna. I don't want to play it, but uh, if if I can, we go through. Um, We go through like a little role-playing game where, where people can you know just uh, do things in a situation, uh, and it, it's super fun for my students. And um, I, I'd like to do that more uh, often. It's very difficult. Tapos nakita mo din yung mga students na tapos na demotivated. Yung mga ganong minor inconveniences, you know. And of course, you're you feel for them because you know who who doesn't want to rest. So yeah. But then, luckily, naman, you know, since these are millennials, young people, then it's not that hard to kind of adjust from physical to online since they're very tech savvy, so very familiar sila with the all tech related stuff. And in my case, uh, it wasn't that hard for me, then, naman, to adjust to online teaching since we have a wide range of resources in the internet. So, madami kang pwedeng ipag-games dyan. Like, even if you can't do it real-time, you could still, 
belong to it. Like perhaps Nick rolling a dice in using the internet. What, well, how do you deal with that? I I don't know how teachers deal with that. Eh. Yung parang ga, nahat, ganun na lang yung students nyo. So what does that make you guys do? With Santo no, like in terms of asking questions or sa lesson mismo. So well, yeah. Are, what's the biggest lesson you learned as a teacher? Exactly. And I think we all, or we all do, now. we all learn from our students every day. But for me, first and foremost, I think it's very important that you have to connect or build rapport with your students. Because if you don't connect to them in a more personal level, I guess, then medyo kahit gaano ka kagaling magtuto, they be just so uninterested in listening to you. So I think. As teachers, it's very important that we also get to kind of level ourselves sa interest nila. So kahit kunwari hindi ka pala basketball, hindi ka pala gaming, if it's the thing, then try to, kahit, you don't have to love it. You just have to kind of familiarize yourself with it para may pag-uusapan kayo outside academics. Kasi yung mga bata, nasa school na sila 8 hours a day. Tapos iba't-ibang subject yan. So parang, Kumbaga, I think it's a relief for them when they see that their teachers or someone na medyo mentor in their eyes are sharing the same interests or gusto namin makinig sa mga bagay na nagpapasaya sa kanila outside school. So I think that's very important. And then another thing for me is discipline. So a lot of teachers medyo pag may mga mahirap disiplinahin bata, you know, hard to deal with students. Minsan, our tendency is to just stay away from them or not hindi naman stay away but kind of parang avoid as much interaction with them or masyado maging mahigpit in my case i don't know if it's my age or what pero for me ito yung mga bata na i think they just you need to be more patient with them like kasi minsan sila yung kailangan na may makikinig lang or parang may makakausap in casual or makikita nilang meron kaya mag-iis sa kanila or umintindi sa kanila. So I think as a teacher, as their second parent, it's also your job to make them feel that na hindi naman sila parang mga nobody sa klase na parang importante lang dito yung mga matatalino, yung mga sumusunod, yung mga babae. No. You have to make them all feel equal and loved in, inside your classroom. So, yeah. Yun yung akin. Thanks, Miss Pat. How about you, teacher Nick? What Pat said, <laughs> but um, so ayun nga, it's it's all about building rapport. Um, but aside from that, I think um, from from my end of the spectrum, importante rin yung ano, um, like what Pat said, importante yung discipline. Uh, for me, importante yung knowing where you're going with ano with the lesson. Uh, you um, for somebody who emphasizes fun. Uh, fun in the classroom. I I want us to focus also on. I I, I realize that uh, it's important to focus on the lesson. Um, it's important to um, you know steer everyone um, to the point instead of just you know um, lazing around. So so that's my um, I, 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 that's the lesson. One of the most important lessons I've learned. And the other one when I was first teaching was um, was realizing that um, how I understood the lesson is not the same as how my students understand the lesson. Um, and I, I know that's a bit um, super, uh, that's a bit superficial, but but it's it's so true. You need to learn that fundamental. It, how you understand the thing, it's not the same as how a student may understand the thing. You you need to understand um, how the, the, the student understands. Uh, and then you start um, you start giving them information and then you start teaching them you start drilling them I, so so that's mine so i'm very sure that it did help you being a student first i'm yeah before oh definitely yeah yeah that's how i see mm. um, you guys more know. more than that um i i think being a gamer being an uh being a lover of fiction being a lover of uh, you know, media, uh, all of that stuff. That has actually been the trump card that you know allows me to have great relationships with the students, uh, great you know, student uh, teacher student relationships. Um, you know, um, it it allows us to communicate in a way that uh, 
what do you call this that makes it understandable i'm I, i'm not an alien um you know uh we, we, i'm not a generational alien that doesn't understand what uh, these students See, i've like. been talking to two teachers two ed- two young educators uh we have today pat torres and nick lianis all right so there they are and we have our last teacher she just finished her class so i would like to introduce to you uh teacher ariel uh, what so i i could see that you teach at the little gym no so what age range do you teach um actually uh, little gym international we teach as young as six months to as old as 12 years old so the little gym we cater to parent child classes as well so not only like, student education but also um parent education as well like how to help their kids grow you know develop holistic ideas so that's how it is so yeah it's a bit surprising actually knowing that there's classes for like six months <laughs> sometimes even five months like that young but uh, it's actually very helpful to start at that early age so yeah did you handle a class already with the six months <laughs> yes, we call that actually the bugs class. Okay. So uh, there are baby bugs. It actually when I started doing the bugs class, I was so scared because like when you hold them, they're like, so soft. <laughs> I was I was so scared to you know like do the gymnastic skills because um, that's why we're little gym. Eh. If you know, it's kind of confusing for some. It's not like tra- we're not. Um, a traditional school we use a lot of movement in order to instill the different lessons and um, the things that we want them to learn so what what we mainly want them to get during at this you know, during the class is um, getting used to the routine of the class first um, there's a lot of singing Depending on the lesson per week. So, for example, this week, uh, we're going to be learning about colors. So, all of the activities, all of the uh, movement exercises that we will be doing, it's all centered to colors. So, we have special directed music for that. For example, we ask them, oh, can you jump on color red? Jump on, uh, can you do your forward roll on color yellow? So things like that. And then we center also in like sharing, um, which is actually a bit hard now because they don't have like physical classmates with them. So just sharing with their family members. What's it like uh, teaching now? Um, given that we're going through this pandemic, maybe you can share or uh, compare your teaching life pre-COVID and now? What are the differences that you're experiencing? Okay. Um, I might cry joke. <laughs> Emotional. No, no, no. Uh, wait. No, it's, um, it's, it's so different. I think I, I speak for all the teachers that uh, it's so different because before, um, although the ano naman, it's, it's the processes are the same. Like we, we do the lesson plan, we we plan out like the important dates for the term, and you know like the the same formula for every teacher. It's 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 a bit harder lang talaga right now because especially for a progressive school that we rely a lot on interaction with their friends, interaction with their teachers. Um, it, it's hard to translate it sometimes, but of course, we, we, we have to make do because it's it's up to the teachers right now not to stomp anybody's development because you, you don't want them to just be sitting while waiting for this pandemic to end. So we really have to think of new ways to um, get them engaged, even virtually. I think the the most, like, the, the hardest part for me is that not seeing my kids, like, 
in person. <laughs> really, <laughs> that's really hard because sometimes you know you get you like not just for the teaching prof- profession like for for everybody the right? like we get burned out we get tired but for me whenever i see my students you know it gives me that extra energy so parang na like it uh, it balances out how i feel or now it's hard because you know you don't see everybody you don't see them in person and uh, you know and Yeah, to be honest, like not all of my students were able to enroll. Yeah, so that's that's the hard part as well. Yeah. What are the internal barriers you see in your students? Is there a common one? How do you adjust? So this is by Bean Gabriel or Gabriel. Um, again, what are the internal barriers you see in your students is there a common one how do you adjust hmm. interesting fear of failure natatakot sila mag ano uh natatakot sila mag mag practice kasi they know they'll fail so parang that's that's common diba even us we we have that you know fear of failure and, and that's the anxiety that causes you to procrastinate that's the anxiety that causes you to focus on the things you're good at but um ano mayon? yung pagganon, how do you adjust? you have to um, you have to tell your um, you have to tell your students, you have to remind your students it's okay to fail. Um, at that immediate ano immediately uh, it's it's okay to fail immediately in that exercise. the point is that ano um, at the end of the day you're able to be better uh, than your failure. so so uh, that's that one I think it's that anxiety to to fail, um, which is something that you know everyone has to struggle with. Yeah, I think that's something na mahirap din ipaintindi sa mga bata in my opinion because uh, all these kids they have these unspoken expectations or meron silang mga kung hindi man expectations sa sarili, other people expecting from them that you have to get good grades, you have to be good at this. So, syempre dinadala din ng mga bata yun. So, it's kind of hard to explain to them as well na parang it's okay to fail, what's important is natuto ka. Syempre, if you're a kid na merong dami na i-expect sa'yo, parang that's kind of hard to digest. Kasi at the end of the day, you wanna see concrete results. You wanna see the numbers. You wanna see good grades. You wanna pass, right? So yeah, I think I have to agree with Nick that that's one internal barrier that us teachers have to go through every day to make students understand that learning does not equate to having good grades all the time. Minsan, nasa proseso siya. Kung paano mo natutunan at paano ka natututo. Yeah. Right, yeah. I agree. And for the preschool naman, I think one of the main is that they have a hard time warming up mm. to the teachers. Like, like, and it's different for everybody. Like how they react to new people, whether it be the teacher, whether it be the class, and it greatly affects their um, attitude towards the class. So, um, for me, that's the first step that I have to do. I have to um, get to know them in a deeper level. I have to be, you know, a sunshine. <laughs> A ray of light for them, for them to be able, and it's different for everybody. Like, it's it's not like because I've already had the chance also like teaching like high school kids and grade school kids as well, and with them because you can talk, parang you can bridge that on I'm teacher again, but for the kids like sometimes I would have kids that would be like when they see my face they will cry. I'm, huh? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Am I scary? So, and it's different. So, it's it's one of the like first struggles that I have to get um, um to how figure. Do you out. also uh, keep up with your personal relationship with your friends, with family. After work, uh, it's um it's either chores or art. Um, but I I think I know I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna broaden it even more. Uh, take care of more than just my, I know my my artistic aspirations, but but that's what I do nowadays. Okay, nice. How about you, teacher Pat or Miss Pat? Uh, for me, 
before before the COVID, what I usually do is I do Wi-Fi. So I go to the gym and then I train. Because for me, ano na din siya, parang it's a way for me to release yung mga naiipon na stress and pinis inside your body. But then, gym's closed. So I, I, was, I got stuck at home. So now, sad to say, Netflix person ako. Ako, I listen to my body. Like, pag sinabi ng utak ko na, pagod na ako. I really, usually, I stop working just like for a few minutes kahit tulog lang saglit and then afterwards, magpo-continue ako. But I know na uh, it's not applicable to everyone. Like, not everyone has the opportunity na makapagpahinga, lalo na pag sobra-sobra yung demands ng trabaho. And when I have those days, what I do na lang is I run to my family. I think they're the very first people na talagang tatakuhan ko, aside from my friends. Because I know my friends naman, they have lives then. Nagkatrabaho na yung mga yan. You know, they have their individual lives. So I think your go-to people would always be your family. So I just shoot a quick text to my mom. Like, kahit nasa trabaho ko. And I just say, mommy, pagod ako. And then she would reply na parang, uwi ka agad na maya, mamasahihin kita. You know, the simple things. Or sometimes she took my favorite food. So, there are some things talaga na you have to admit that you can't deal with alone. Hindi mo siya kaya mag-isa. And you have to depend or rely on people closest to you. And in my case, that's my family. Okay. Alright. How about you, uh, teacher Ariel? Um, as for me, I just... Same. Actually, I just watch anime. <laughs> I play games <laughs> on my free time. Like, when I, when I get home, because um, during the start of the pandemic, we would do classes um, at home, pa, like work from home. But now, it's also better to do it here at the gym or like at school to report. Um, I feel like I'm. I, I feel like I'm more productive here as well as compared when I'm at home. So uh, when I get home, of course, I shower. I take a long bath just to uh, like also disinfect. <laughs> and then after that, I eat dinner and then I just unwind by watching anime <laughs> and or I play with my switch that's it <laughs> read them so by Tabawan Bongao teachers are our frontliners in building the foundation of students into becoming future leaders thank you po sa inyong lahat thank you sa mga teachers natin here today okay next comment please look at me ah this one this is nice LM Veloso congrats to these young educators they are all so bright at their young age they seem to be dedicated to their profession. Keep up the good work. The future of our youth is in your hands. Mold them to be good citizens and God love loving individuals. Cheers. Thank you, LM. This is very nice. This is very nice message. And last, Arbel Manyalak. Extremely proud of these former United members. Your students are super lucky to have you as their educators. Keep it up and continue making a difference. Ah, I like that. Thank you for vlogging the show. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so you know what? A lot of people read really up to you. I as much as I would want to read all the comments. Ang daming ano? Go teacher Nick. Ah, uh, hello teacher Ariel. Go Miss Pat. Ang daming. It comes to show that you have inspired. Uh, your students and that you are definitely making a difference in their lives. So, in behalf of your students and the other students out there, I would like to say thank you for you know, being uh, being a very influential educator. So, I got to see your insights and thank you also for sharing. From teachers. You have it. Again, thank you Pat, Nick, and Ariel for being on today's show, and thank you also for sharing your insights. Um, I'm, I'm, I was really happy to hear um, from the teachers' point of view. Now. So again, thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys, uh, Pat, Ariel, and I hope to meet you also, Nick, in person uh, eventually. So stay safe, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you so much. Okay, so there you have it. You heard from your teachers. 
And the one thing I would like to say is that you gotta listen to your teachers. <laughs> listen to your teachers. You could see how hard they uh, work just to really educate you guys. And because they really believe that education is really, really important. And I believe that um, teachers are also frontliners of the day. So I would like to thank um, Teacher Pat, Teacher Nick, Teacher Ariel, and all the other teachers out there. Um, also my past teachers as well. Thank you for continuing to educate all the students. You know, we, we, we recognize your hard work. So thank you, thank you so much. We are so grateful to have teachers like Pat, Ariel, and Nick. So Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.